Well, everyone, welcome back to this episode of Catholic Single and Flourishing, and I'm very excited to have Jonathan Texera joining us today. Jonathan and his wife, Amanda, started Wallet Win to help everyday Catholics like you create the life of their dreams by getting intentional with their money. In January 2012, Jonathan and Amanda nearly had $25,000 in debt and had a desire to break free of that debt. Seven and a half months later, they paid it all off and they shut the door on debt completely. And they took that same energy into financial coaching. They launched a Catholic money course and they also host the Catholic Money Podcast. From all that experience, they now have their personal company, their personal finance company called Wallet Win. They live in Omaha with their three children as well. And Jonathan, th thank you so much for joining us today on the podcast. Sure thing. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me to join you here. Yeah. And I had ran into you when we were having, we were at the, the focus reunion in Lincoln there. Mm -hmm. It was really awesome to, to connect with you. And I, I'm just curious as to, to know what the experience was like for you, just seeing focus being several years removed and, and just re-engaging with, with some people there. Yeah, it was pretty neat. Um, I first was involved with Focus my freshman year of college in 2004, and I joined staff in 2008. Uh, so it was a little bit smaller back then. Um, I remember like my the Bible study I went to, I mean, the missionary just like, printing off, you know, like a Word doc uh, each week uh, to lead it. And, and I don't even know if there was a handout or not. And, um, yeah, the first focus conference I went to was uh, like maybe like a thousand people. Uh, this last one that we just went to, uh, it was like seventeen thousand. Mm -hmm. It was a big right. deal that they hired. It was like seventy three or something missionaries the year I joined. Now they've hired like three hundred fifty mm -hmm. in one That's year. That's right. So it's um, it's just really neat to see how it's grown. Um, I imagine there's still a good bit of, you know, people not really, not always knowing exactly what, what they're doing in some of their roles, but just saying yes to, to be faithful to whatever God's calling them to and all that. But like, boy, in the back then, like I, I was put into some jobs that I had no business having. <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. And now there's like teams of people who know what they're doing, doing some of these jobs. And so it's, it's good to see how it, how it's grown up, how it's changed, but and I say most of many, maybe all the most important ways it has stayed the same. Right. And that, that I think is just, I'm sure it's mind blowing for you being in joining in 2004 or well, at least starting with being involved as a student in 2004 and seeing the transformation of the organization over the years and the, and, and I think that that I've heard your story before. There's some connectedness to where you are now, a lot of connectedness of where you are now to the, to the mission of focus. And that's where I really want to start is tell, tell us just a little bit about the story of how you ended up launching wallet win. Sure. Bang. It's a bit of a tale. Uh, my wife, Amanda and I, we both joined staff in 2008 and she was in Illinois I was uh, those first years on the East Coast. I was in Vermont. Uh, so we never really talked that much. We'd run into each other. Like I could point her out in a crowd because you could back then, right? We There was like a hundred, just over like a hundred people on staff. Like you could know, oh yeah, that's so-and-so. They're over there. Um, so that was like as much, maybe we had talked once at our first uh, summer training as missionaries. Now going into our third year, we were uh, what we call deans at summer training. So we were in charge. We were the leaders of our little uh, group of whatever it is, like 10 people that we're living with for the summer. And so we, instead of being, you know, two out of, I don't know, 200 people maybe at training, now we were two people out of, um, I don't know, like 25 or 30 or something like that. So now it was a much smaller group. We actually ran into each other, actually just talk, discuss things, got to know each other. And I thought this, this girl's pretty neat. So we dated, we got engaged, we got married. Um, and when we were engaged, I was a missionary at NYU in New York City. She was still in, in Illinois, at, in Champaign. 
and so those are not near each other. So we had to travel back and forth, and we we made a point because we figured, all right, we can like talk on the phone and video chat and stuff like that, but like we're really gonna know. It's shared experience that can really help a relationship flourish and help you figure out if you want to, if it's, if you should go to the next level and all that stuff. So we knew we needed to spend some time with each other. Uh, so we would take turns flying to go see the other one every month. And then the deal was when you stayed at home, right? When you were the host, you paid for, you planned the activities and then you paid for them. Um, the activities in New York City were always a bit more expensive than the ones in middle of nowhere, <laughs> Illinois. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. But that didn't stop me uh, from spending the money that I didn't have. Uh, and then so I fell into this this terrible cycle of using credit cards. You know, I was like, okay, I'm getting paid uh, in a few days, but I'm really hungry. <laughs> and there's no food. So I need to go buy some groceries. I'll put it on this credit card and I get paid in a couple of days and I'm going to pay it off. And then because I was doing that, well, I had less money now for, you know, this next two weeks or whatever it is. I ran out a little bit sooner and needed to put more on the card. And so eventually I couldn't pay it back because I didn't have enough leftover. Uh, and then I just started accumulating debt and carrying the balance. And I don't even think I, like I knew that's when I'm paying interest, but I don't think I understood just, how much interest I was paying, how high that interest rate was. Um, so anyway, we never talked about this. We did not talk about money aside from, hey, when you're hosting, you pay for stuff. Like that was it, uh, which was a mistake. So we get engaged and I don't know how, she just asked me, she's like, hey, so like, what are you, what's your like finances? Like, do you have debt? Do you have like, loans and stuff? I was like, well, <laughs> so I had a big pile of student loans. I had this like four or so thousand dollars of, of credit cards. And then she like freaked out, not in the bad way, just like couldn't handle what? Wait, wait you will what? Um, and then she did another thing she really shouldn't have done, uh, and which we tell everybody to not do, which is she just gave me like four thousand dollars to pay off the credit card bill. Mm. We were just wow. engaged mm -hmm. for like five hours. Uh, who knows what, what could have happened afterwards. Thankfully, it all worked out. But so if you're listening to this, do not do that. <laughs> Wait until you're married. Um, anyway, so we got married. As you can tell, I wasn't so good with money except for spending it. Um, <laughs> so we – and then I you think I'd learned my lesson too, but I figured out – I thought I discovered this great tip that if we put the honeymoon on a credit card – and, of course, this is – Everyone's telling you, if you only get one, make it big, mm -hmm, make it, you know, mm -hmm. so you're like, yep. all right, this is 10 days. Uh, so if I put it on a credit card, and actually, you know, some of those nights will be free. And so I'm saving my, all this. So I thought it was so <laughs> slick. Uh -huh. So I put stuff on the credit card and I forgot, <laughs> I forgot about it. I forgot to pay it off and all this. Um, or, and so, and I, I mean, she knew this was like the plan, but she had figured I'd took care of things <laughs> so she um so then we discovered oh shoot the bill it's it was due during our honeymoon <laughs> so we're like two days into being married and having this big old money fight uh and we just thought you know once we cooled down and, and got past it and figured it all out um we, this is not what we want to do the rest of our life we need to figure out money we do not want to fight about this so we got home over the next few months trying to figure out what to do with our money. And uh, we, I'd say, we read a lot of things, listened to a lot of things, all that. One of the definitely the biggest influences was Dave Ramsey and his radio show and his book and all that. So we just like drank that Kool-Aid, man. We were all in. Um, and so we simplified our life. We did a little bit more fundraising. We did up our income just a little bit, not tons. Um, and then we paid off. So we, in total, about $25,000 or so, paid it all off in seven and a half months. Um, and then other missionaries started asking us how we did it and how could they do it. So we just started telling them, well, okay, we start budgeting and you need to, you know, figure out what, where your money's going. You need to make most, a lot of it go somewhere else. 
uh, and that kept happening. We we got invited to speak at things, and then we gave a class to the other missionaries at training. And we would sit down with people over lunch and just talk about their money or have them over for dinner. Uh, and it was just doing more and more and more. It was like the thing that we that we were known for. And we're still, you know, like full time missionaries at this point. Um. So we're like, okay, maybe there's something here. And one time this guy was like, you know, like, you guys got to turn this into something. I think you could do it. And we're like, ah, I don't know. You're kind of crazy. <laughs> um, but as time went on, okay, okay, you know, maybe maybe so. We we adopted our first child. So I know our life is getting a little bit busier. Um, and so we're like, okay, yeah, we don't have time to have everybody over for dinner. We could maybe we could do something online really start we were trying to we're starting to discover online courses and back then it wasn't the thing it is now so then we moved um moved on from focus moved here to omaha um i had a job at a radio station uh kind of like a whole new um section of business for them trying to do something other than radio looking for a new mark a new audience still like radio con uh, audio content but anyway um i'm working on that project we adopt our second kid. Um, we're working on the money thing, this money class idea, like on the side, like we'll get to it someday. And then one day my boss informs me about that they had a board meeting and the board decided to just focus on radio and stop doing the thing I was working on. Mm. Uh, and so my job was done. <laughs> uh, so that someday... Uh, that we might sell a uh, money class became within the next six weeks uh, because that's when the, the severance was done. So we, uh, we had me and had a lot more time to work on it. Uh, so we just, okay, we, we had done a little bit of testing and some, you know, we mapped some of it out. So we just did the rest of it. We recorded the class, made the worksheets. And we were releasing it week by week. You know, we're waking up at like three in the morning to record while the kids are asleep. And then I'm editing it and uploading it like the next day. Um, but through that, so it was crazy. It's not that crazy anymore, hopefully, thankfully. But through that, we started to see that the things we knew about money, not everybody else knew yet. And we could teach them. And people seemed to enjoy the way we brought things forward and the way we talked about it, the way we had some fun with it. Um, and in this time, and I'd forgotten, we had, um, when we, we we would lead the Dave Ramsey class, and it's good, and his book's good, he's good, all that, but it just doesn't go deep enough, right? Because he's not Catholic, he has a Protestant worldview, and so he, he doesn't have the 2,000 years of saints and encyclicals and teachings and all of this to stand on top of. And so when we would lead it, we'd have, to, okay, but as Catholics, we can think about it like this and this and this as well or he forgot to say that so we started so we were mixing in this very practical instruction and in like how to handle money like what mom and dad didn't teach you and we're mixing it in with here's what the church has taught for hundreds maybe you know thousands of years um but you probably haven't heard this either so we started mixing that together and that was really i think what helped things take off and and help us uh stand out in the marketplace and be something that can really help folks you know certain yeah sure handle your money but the big deal is you want to handle your money so that you are found to be a good steward and are welcomed into the joy of your master right on that's awesome thank you so much for establishing your story there i think it's very helpful i see also the the sticker or whatever that is back behind you real success oh, is yeah. ending up in heaven and I, I think that's, that's right. just such such an important perspective to have the nuts and bolts of here's here's the process, which so many people are lacking. The parents, as you mentioned, our parents didn't teach us these things. And the the process that Dave Ramsey unfolds is, is just very solid in terms of here's the the steps that help to create you to ha help to create momentum to take you forward and also experience that financial peace. But then that that other aspect that you're talking about on the spiritual side, sure, he he quotes scripture and has a lot of very good things to, to say there from a scriptural level, but also the saints, church tradition and so on. There's there's a lot of richness that the Catholic Christianity has has to offer. So I'm just curious, especially on that that spiritual side, what 
spiritual principle really sticks out to you as something that, that you teach or maybe is resonating with you in the here and now today? I'd say the one that I, I, I think about, it's, it's one I've thought about a lot. Um, I think I've done a lot of my thinking on, on this. Uh, so I'm not thinking about too much as of late, but I certainly have, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about maybe some other things, but anyway, uh, I'm, I would, that would be the universal destination of goods. Mm. Yes. Uh, which is this, which is the teaching that says, you know, in the beginning, God gave all of creation to humanity, everybody for our good. Um, and so all of us have a right to the goods of creation and what's come about from that, which would be, you know, things that we've made out of it. Uh, and probably even, you know, what's made through those things, which would be money. Um, and just this idea, this wild idea that, um, what was it? Just the other day, uh, we were at, um, like my daughter's like day camp thing, and for some reason, I forget what we were doing. Like we needed a pair of scissors. I forget for what. We needed to tape something. I don't know what it was. Anyway, oh no, we needed a marker because they're signing everybody's shirts. We were picking her up from week long camp. That's what it was. And they needed a marker because, you know, they're going to put their names on the back of their shirts and stuff. And we didn't have a mark. Nobody had a marker in her group. It's like, oh, I'll look around and find one. So, just, you know, walk down the hall. I knew, like, there was a desk, uh, like, kind of an office in this, like, opener, a more open area. So, I was like, oh, I probably have a marker around there. Um, sure enough, they did. Sitting on the desk was, you know, like a cup with a bunch of stuff in it and a Sharpie. So, I grabbed that brought it back and we were done of course put it back and in that moment now it wasn't a need it wasn't some dire need it wasn't the starving man who has the right to the food in my pantry but i think in some way that marker at that moment like we did have the right to pick it up and to use it and to bring it back because we were the ones who had need of it of course not a dire need but we had need of that resource um, at the time and to be able to understand that and move with the freedom of that right i didn't have to try to grab somebody who who you know is part of that apostolate and you know they're busy running all this other stuff right now i, I need to stop them and ask them if i can borrow a marker um so there's just a, a freedom that comes in that of course you don't we don't help our you know i'm not just gonna walk into my neighbor's house um unannounced and then go through his fridge and eat it eat stuff um you know, it's not, it's just not a, a blank check to just do whatever we want with whoever's stuff. But this idea that in Catholicism, we have the, like a fundamental human right is the right to private property. Without that, like so much doesn't work. And at the same time, all that private property that's mine also belongs to everyone else in the world. And that's just right. crazy. Yes. Yep. Uh, that those two things are both true at the very same time for the one, like the <laughs> thing that's in my hand. Um, and it, and it's like, one. it's like the, it, it's not as if somebody can just break into your house and start sleeping in your bed. That's of course not what mm -hmm. you're saying, but I think it's very much in our American worldview of here's my stuff. There's your stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's very separated and compartmentalized. But in there, there is a necessity for boundaries, right? But it's also a matter of we, we have a call that as, as Christians to be, share, share the goods because we're not the sole owners. God is ultimately the owner mm -hmm. and we're merely called to, to be stewards. And in this whole, yeah. whole idea of, I, I think about Genesis and oftentimes I think in, in the Catholic world, we point to, hey, the first thing that God told humanity is be fruitful and multiply. And mm -hmm. sometimes we don't get to that next part, which is take dominion over overall creation. That as as a human race, we have that duty to be able to to take dominion over over the world. God gives us the intellect and the will to do that, not not at the expense of the world, but to make the world a better place and to make conditions better for the rest of creation. Yes, yes, it's it's our job, right? We're we're not just 
the dominators. We're the caretakers, right? We are yes. the ones tending to creation. And sure, yeah, we get to use it, right? You, we get to pick. I guess that's a bad example. I was going to say pick the apple and eat it. Uh, I was thinking about <laughs> the apple orchard nearby. Um, <laughs> well, oh, Adam well, and Eve, it um, wasn't an apple. It was just fruit. That's what it's Yeah, right? It was a fruit. So, so you we, can we're good on analogy. saying apple, right? So, right, it, we can pick the fruit, the, the apple, and we can eat it. But if that's all we do, well, and we don't tend to the tree, we don't make sure that the soil is the right pH, and we don't get the water and blah, 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 like, we're not going to have apples very long because that tree is going to die. And so yes. it's our, we, yes, we get to use things. We need to take care of them. And same with our material possessions and, and to understand we even like in our parenting, even it's come out that, you know, it's the, yes, that is somebody else's doll or toy or whatever it is, crayons, but it serves the family right now for those to be used by someone else. So yes, they are yours. And yes, your sister's using them. Um, and it's just this, it says, yeah, yeah, the, the family, and then you can expand that to, you know, the family of, of God, right? The family, of the church, um, or even you can even go beyond that, just humanity. The family is better off if that guy on the corner has the, you know, the food I bought instead of me. Um, so it's just, yeah. So that's one, that's one that I've been thinking about. Wow. Well, that's, that's really cool. Thank you for sharing some of those, those thoughts and wisdom there. My, my podcast as of late has been all about helping Catholic singles flourish today and while also paving a path for their permanent vocation in the future. And I think it's easy for us as single people to lose perspective of either that's the trajectory or where, where I could be going. And right now, I don't really have that front and center. So I'm just going to live my life and pay my bills and all that. But I'm, I'm just curious from your perspective and your coaching, working with people and so on. Why do you think mastering personal finance is so crucial for Catholics at the time of being single? Mm. It is. I mean, it's crucial and necessary no matter where you're at, uh, oh, yeah. whether you're single, Absolutely. married, any of that. Um, when 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 John the Baptist is out there telling everybody, "Hey, the Messiah is coming. You better get ready," and then they ask and they actually say, "Okay, what do we do?" He talks about money. Um, he tells them, you know, if you've got two uh, two cloaks, give one to the guy who doesn't have it. Do the same thing with your food. Don't extort people. Be happy with your wages. Um, like it's all money because it's all about relationships. And then when Jesus is talking about the dishonest steward. Um, he, he said, and we, okay, okay. He says, you know, if you, this guy, like he, he knew what he was doing with money. Like he could handle it and he could, he could use it. He was wise with it. He was clever with it. If you aren't good with small things, measly things like money, how could I trust you with eternal things? Mm. And so this mm -hmm. is a big deal. This is weighty yes. stuff because our money, it, it, it influences like every other part of our life. Right. Right. Absolutely. If I, uh, I, um, I cracked the screen on my laptop a month or two ago and I was in a very bad mood for the next day or two because I just, I knew it was going to cost me and it was a dumb mistake. And like, I, I just in a mad mood, right. Because of the cost that was going to come out because of that. Uh, but when I find like a $20 bill in my pocket from, you know, in the jacket I didn't wear since last year, I'm in a pretty great mood. Let's go get ice cream, guys. Uh, and so it can affect us in, in those ways, and of course, much deeper ones. But it's it's very important to um, to get a handle on your money, to understand how to use it as soon as possible. Certainly, uh, while you're single and still trying to figure out where the the Lord is calling us to, because everyone is called to be a good steward. Everyone will be sanctified through the way they interact with money. Now, it's going to look different. If you end up being called to a religious order who take and you take a vow of poverty, well, that's a different interaction with money. There still will be times when you use money or you have possessions, things that you're in charge of for the time being. You'll need to understand things well in order to do that well. 
and you might be married and you're going to need to understand how to manage your household income and and everything that goes along with that uh and and even and then some of those people right some of even married with families all this stuff some are going to be called and you know single people all these other people except for maybe religious and all that but some of us are going to be called to manage very large amounts of money i mean even even saints right even like saint catherine drexel right she had tons of money millions hundreds of millions of dollars um through her inheritance she had the vow of poverty but she was the head of the order so she had to manage all that money um so heck even them uh some of us are going to be called to manage a whole lot of money and we really need to know what's going on in order to do that well and not fall into any traps some of us are going to be called to very simple lives and maybe not that much money and some, most of us will be called to the middle, to a moderate amount of finances. And we need to steward those well. You know, with the, the parable of the talents, the, right, the, the guy, one guy gets um, like five and then two and then one. It's not on, it's not how much like you came back with, right? And I've always thought like the guy who had two and doubled it, like he probably had to work even harder than the guy who had five and doubled it. Cause you're right? just like, you have more, more to work with. But anyway, they both get welcomed in. And the last guy, the guy with just one, he could have done it too. It's not how much we came back with, it's just how we used it. And we all have the opportunity, no matter where we're called to with the amount we're all called to do it well none of us are going to be called to financial irresponsibility that is no one's path to righteousness now we might be really might call to something very simple might be called to you know kind of just enter into in a way more than others the material poverty that our Lord experienced here on earth. But even like, no matter what that amount of, of wealth is, we need to be able to handle it well. And it, it's going to affect so many other parts of our life. And the Lord, like he wants that for us. He, he, he wants us to follow in his footsteps and the way he handles things and the way he wants us to, to live and to act. And boy, oh boy, does he use money to teach us a lot, right? There's, so many parables and 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 verses and all this regarding money and possessions you know if we don't understand if i don't understand the benefits of budgeting and really get that when jesus alludes to that when he says hey what kind of dope is going to build this tower without knowing if he's got enough money to finish it well yeah i could i could appreciate that but if i know that and if i know how much better my life and easier or, or smoother things have gotten since I've been budgeting, well then, oh yes, I can really understand. It does really pay off to count the cost before I go into something. And so I understand the lesson of understanding what he's calling me to in discipleship even better. Um, so there's a multitude of reasons. And let's just be honest here. If you're single, you're looking maybe to get married, having your finances in order is gonna make you a catch. <laughs> so, I mean, there's just that too. Yes. That, and that's a very important part of, well, my, my coaching program, I want to have that financial component because I think a lot of people recognize that that's there. They just don't know that the steps forward, but I really like of the, some of the things that you're saying here with the money touches all these different aspects of your life. And I think, especially the spiritual aspect, a lot of times it's very easy to compartmentalize and think, Oh, here's, you know, my spiritual life. I'll go pray. And then I handle my money and you know, God will provide, God will take care of things. But there is something about us being able to grow in financial habits and in, in virtue in, in that sense, because the, it, it, it is the case, as you point out, Jesus talks about money in so many different areas of the, the gospels. And it's one of the most, it's probably the, 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 the thing that he talks about the most is money. So there is clearly a connection that the gospel is trying to say between our money, between how we budget, how we steward our resources and our spiritual lives as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this, this is it. It was coming to me. 
Yeah, I knew it was. It's been rolling around in my brain, and now it's coming out. <laughs> um, this is the thing that I've been thinking of lately. Is thinking about money, and you know, even if you're in our course or you read our book or any of that, we 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 tell you, you know, money is is it's morally neutral, which I think maybe that's still true. Mm -hmm. um, in and of itself, right? The act of having money, the act of buying something, et cetera, like you, we need more information to know if those acts, the moral, morality of those acts. So maybe it's still, it's still true, I guess. But man, I don't know. I can't think of anything else that is so weighty in that, right? The, just having money or using it or not using it, those decisions can carry moral weight. And like, like, you know, uh, mm -hmm. in, in yep. ways that are the other possessions, other things, other property doesn't. And so just, to, I'm just trying to wrap my head around this because hmm. there is so there's, it's just a weightier thing. And so, yep. man, I, maybe you could, you can, I think maybe, I guess I'm not as, as uh, deep on philosophy and all of that business to really dive into it so much, you know, uh, someone maybe could could uh, be like, "Hey, hello!" Like, of course, this is the answer. But um, you know, so about like, oh, is it is it neutral or not? Um, boy, if it is neutral, like it's on the edge and it could fall either way. So yeah, it's, that's the thing I've been thinking I, about. Um, I think it's yeah. I I think Dave Ramsey brings us up in in his Financial Peace University where he talks about it's amoral in the sense of it's morally neutral. Where similar to a brick, you can throw it at somebody, right? And that's a immoral act if you're mm. assaulting somebody. I'm using that as an extreme example for a reason. But you can also use the brick to build a house. Yeah. So that's a good because you're providing mm. shelter for somebody. And it's the same thing when it comes to money. It's like a it's a tool that can be used mm. for good for building building up the the dominion that God's kingdom in, uh, in the world or or even the spiritual things, if you're donating to good causes that have spiritual mm -hmm. eternal rewards from that, or you can use it for morally corrupt things. So th that I think there, there's something there. And, and I, as you, to your point about mm -hmm. there's money has a certain potential that other material items don't because it's so fluid. It's a means to uh, something, something else, as opposed to if you already bought the car, your car has gone down in value. You can trade it back in, but you're trading it back in for money or a new car, but it's still the value is based on the monetary, the monetary uh, value. And, and that's, that's just to your point. But I, I think about it too, in the sense of how we tie it to our spiritual lives. You mentioned earlier, the parable of the, the dishonest steward and how the, if you cannot be trusted with, with uh, money, then how will God trust you for true wealth? And what's what's interesting is just based on the translations, I've come to understand they, it's oftentimes translated dishonest wealth, which is talking about money. And I think that's a mistranslation because I've done a little bit of research on this this parable and this passage in partic particular. And it actually sounds like, based on commentary, that it's money is superficial wealth. That's really the word. Instead of dishonest wealth for money, it's superficial wealth. So going from the superficial wealth of money, God wants to entrust us with true riches, but it's through how we learn how to handle the material money, the superficial wealth, we are entrusted with the spiritual wealth, the spiritual riches over time. So just just some thoughts there on on uh, scripture and, and wealth. I, I'm curious to know, especially as we, oh, do you have something to, to share there? Yeah, I was gonna say, I really like how you said money has more, it's, has more potential. Mm -hmm. right? It's like it has more so much like in that one little dollar bill. It's like it, it's just like it's just like vibrating with potential <laughs> energy. Like it's this um, I like this, like, I don't know, this glass vial and it's like glowing and you see all these particles like going crazy in it. And you're just like, here you go. Like, I'm not going <laughs> to drop it. Um, and because as you're saying the thing with bricks, I'm, and because I'm thinking like, yeah, but there's nobody on the, the side of the road begging for bricks. <laughs> that's and right that's i right. have way more bricks than the other people like 
do I really think I'm that much better? But when it's money, <laughs> there's that temptation. Well, if you're and playing then, settle, there's a there's potential. There's like there's an energy, not in some like whoa, universe has energy. Right, uh, so right. It's not a great word. None of the but just new age. There's sense. just it's it's weighty. There's potential there. Um, that yeah, I don't know what else might be like that. And so mm-hmm. because of that, it's like you know it's um like there's a brick right. If you handle a brick improperly, you could drop it on your feet and break your toe. Mm-hmm. That's no good. Yep. So I don't want yep. to handle my brick improperly. But if I'm holding a loaded and cocked gun, I really don't want to handle that improperly because that could really hurt me or somebody else. And like because it has more potential, right? It's got more energy. It's yep. like cooking in there, right, in that bullet, just waiting to explode and, and go out. I feel like that's what money is like. Like, there's just so much there that that it it's man. It's again, yeah. I maybe you can say. I think you maybe you, you still could say it's amoral, right? It it doesn't have any uh, bearing in and of itself. But boy, oh boy, it, it's, it's just something it's you have to handle. It's certainly raring to go, right? And go on one side or the other. It's yep. wild. Well, and it's, I mean, it's similar. You're using that gun analogy. It's like guns themselves are not, they're, they're amoral themselves, right? They're, because mm-hmm. they can be a very good thing in use of protection or hunting mm-hmm. and those sorts of things, but can be something that has the potential to commit atrocities. So that, that is something there similar with, with money in, mm-hmm. in that sense. But moving on, I, I think into, I, I'm just curious, you shared a little bit about your story and mm-hmm. some of the mistakes that, that you had. But I'm I'm curious, if you were to give one one tip or one piece of advice to our audience of something, maybe something it, would, it was that you would have done differently in your single years, to really take advantage of your single years, what would that piece of advice be? I would have budgeted and done it with a goal in mind. Wow. So yeah. budget, budgeting, right, that's when I'm, I'm sitting down and I'm going to say, okay, I've got this many dollars this month. I'm going to spend them on this and this and this. And then I go do that throughout the month. What I was doing, uh, I called it bank balance budgeting, where if I wanted to buy something, I just look at what my bank balance was. And if that was bigger than the price, I'd buy it. Without thinking about, oh, you know what? I need to pay rent next week. Or I want to buy groceries and things like that. And so if so actually paying attention, being really intentional with my money, but to do that with some goal in mind. Otherwise, okay, maybe I'm just spending things well, or maybe I might say be saving. Maybe I'd stumble into that. But if I don't have a goal, then what am I even saving for? Why why am I building that barn? So I'd want a goal. If I could have goals and then like, yeah, I would be very disciplined with my finances to get there. And that doesn't mean having no fun. Uh, right. It just means not letting any of it go to waste. And I think I let a lot go to waste. I, I think that there's a lot of wisdom there, especially on the so budgeting. It's very basic. I talk about that on my show. But I think a lot of it turns into expense tracking. If you don't have mm-hmm. something like what you're talking of, there's a goal in mind that I'm working towards. And whether it's a material item or an experience like travel or something like that, mm-hmm there's more of a a direction rather than you just do the stuff you do the budgeting but you are actually planning for something in in the future Mm -hmm. yeah it's 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 a good thing but it's good because of what it allows you to do yeah yeah definitely well a couple final questions as we we wrap up here I'm, i'm curious to know in in terms of so I've, I've talked about my audience, people who listen to the show, being Catholic singles. A lot of us are very faithful, wanting to pursue marriage and pursue relationships and everything. But sometimes we just feel like we're in the state of perpetual singleness. And I'm, I'm just wondering from your perspective, being a, a married man and maybe even something your, your wife has, has talked about on, with, on the podcast or with you just in general, what other what final financial tips would you like to give to Catholic Christians who feel they're in the state of perpetual singleness? Yeah, and I don't. I mean, I understand. I was single once, um, yeah. 
And in the same way, we like we had infertility for a number of years. So like, mm -hmm. I understand, you know, maybe because I'm about to say something that like, well, think about like the good side of it. I'll get into that a little bit better. But it's like, yes, I guess. Yeah, I don't have the downsides of the other thing. But I saw the downsides of this one. So I'm not trying to downplay those or minimize them or say they don't exist. I, I get you. I feel you. But there is a freedom that you have that you probably will not have at any other time in your life. Even if you stay single, as you get older, you're probably, hopefully, going to gain more responsibilities in your community, in your career, whatever it might be. And maybe, right, you're going to gain a lot of responsibilities in the realm of personal family life. So no matter what, you are probably at the time in your life when you have the most available, like disposable time. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's just you right now. Yeah. So I, like, I, if I had some big goal or whatever, like I don't have the freedom right now in my life to go, you know what? I'm eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for two weeks because I need this money for something else. I can't do that because my wife certainly – and probably my kids, they're going to get sick of that. And I can't just like, or it's like, well, I'm living off ramen and trail mix. Uh, I can't do that anymore. But doing that, right, that would allow me to free up some money to do something else or whatever else it might be. Um, you can't, you get to make these crazy decisions because you're the one. Like as, as, and of course, none of us are really in charge of our own life, but like this might be the closest you ever get to it. And so don't waste it. This is like a, it's an opportunity. I understand. It's like, hey, it's a night. I don't want it to last forever. No, neither do I. I don't want it that to last forever for you too. But while you've got it, you might as well squeeze it out for what it's worth. Right. Yeah. And what I'm hearing here is there's a special opportunity, especially having the freedom, maybe more so the flexibility to be able to mm. make these choices, these quicker choices of what to do with our money. But I, I think it goes back to what you said earlier about budgeting with a goal, because mm. there's, it, it could be the travel experience and whatnot, but even in the context of, if I really feel like God is leading me in the direction towards marriage, even though I'm single right now, I can mm. start thinking about saving for a, a down payment on a home yeah. and making sure that I'm budgeting enough money for money for retirement and investing for retirement mm -hmm. and, and those, those sorts of things. The, those are all, all the, I think things that it's very easy for us as single people to forget, but we, we can, because we have that flexibility mm. to, with our, within our budget to be able to, to move towards in, in a quick way that a family can't, can't quite do. Yeah. I think it's easy to, in some ways think like, oh yeah, well, like my life hasn't really started yet. Um, yeah. And yeah. of course, yeah, maybe a big chapter hasn't started yet, but it, we've cracked that book open. Uh, and so some of those things are right. Just getting, getting out of debt, get working on the habit of budgeting, saving, you know, and investing in for retirement or starting a business, all these things. There, there's a benefit to doing them earlier than later. And so yes. we don't need to wait. That's right. Um, like your life has started mm -hmm. and again, just think of it, man. Like you, you, you're engaged and all this stuff and you're like, oh yeah. And babe, the honeymoon is going to be good. <laughs> Cause I got, I've been saving for this for six years, you know, and you know what? Yeah. We're, uh, I can't, you know, we might be young and spry now, but someday we're going to be old and wrinkly, but don't worry because I've been maxing out my retirement for the last eight years or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and not, not my credit cards, ways you can right. show up and just like you can provide, right. You know, yep. um, you, maybe you've done, you've prayed holy hours. You've even maybe written a letter or something to your future spouse. Well, you can also make financial preparations for That's whatever right. future might come your future spouse, um, whatever that vocation is. Awesome. Well, Thank you for, for that. I, I think it's very helpful to have your, your perspective, one, as a coach, but two, as a married man, because it's, as I said before, it's very easy for us as single people to lose, lose perspective on this because we're just in the here and now. 
what can our listeners do to follow you and find your work and what do you offer for for in terms of products and services absolutely we can be found at walletwin.com you want to win with your money walletwin.com our podcast is the catholic money show you should be able to find that anywhere you listen to podcasts or also uh throwing videos up on youtube uh which is actually one of the most popular podcast spots around um we have our Catholic money course, which teaches you all the, you know, the A to Z, what mom and dad or father didn't teach you about money, uh, which lives inside WalletWin Academy. That's our membership. You can join where you get access to the course, the community, to a number of other resources um, to help you get a handle on this and live a more integrated life with your finances. Uh, we have a book that came out last year. Um, we've got, uh, I mean, we got kids classes, we've got family emergency binder, we've got the big Catholic calendar, lots of stuff. Easiest ways, hop on over to walletwin.com, click around, grab a free resource that'll get you on our email list and we'll keep you up to date with all the cool stuff that we're doing. Right on. I'll We'll put a link to all that, all those resources in our show notes so our listeners can check those and, and find you. Sounds like you're doing a lot of great things and offer a lot of, a lot of great resources. So thank you so much, Jonathan. One thing that I, last question that I usually ask all my guests is this idea I have of, I, I use the, the term God inspired, the God inspired life a lot on this podcast. Mm -hmm. So the, the question to close is just, what does it mean to you to live a God inspired life? Mm -hmm. Um. That I understand to the best that, yeah, that I understand by God's grace that uh, my life is not my own mm. and that it wow. belongs to him and in service to others. I think that's what that would be. Wow. That's, that's incredible. And that, that fits a lot with the perspective that you're, you're bringing on, on money, how it's, yes, we have our, our call, the universal destination of goods. We have this call to, be good stewards, but to share, to share our wealth with others. And so our lives, it's not just our money, but our lives are not fully our own, but are meant to be given to others. Thank you so much for, for joining us today, Jonathan. Yeah, thank, thank you. It's a, a pleasure and an honor.